Today's book supplement will be a review of Die Empty by Todd Henry. What is a person likely to learn from reading this book? Seven deadly sins of mediocrity, how to avoid those sins, how he or she can fulfill their true potential. Now let's get into it. When the author was 16 years old, he was unable to move his legs, and he went into the hospital and was there for about two months. While being there, a line from a song that was repeated daily stuck with him. It's too late when we die to admit that we don't see eye to eye, really resonated with him, because at the time, he would be seeing relatives coming into his hospital room and interacting with him very carefully, because they were thinking, this could potentially be the last time they speak with him. So this set the now CEO of Accidental Creative Author on a path where he acted more boldly and took more risks. He even made the basketball team after the incident and he developed dedication to making every moment and every decision count. We all understand that our time is limited, yet many people lead unfulfilled lives and sometimes we get caught up in the mundane pressures of life and we never take risks and we too late ask ourselves, who am I, how did I get here and how do I go back? You most certainly can avoid this dilemma. The goal is to die empty. To know when you go you did your best and made the most of your special creativity inside you. Many people choose comfort over risk and in the end when their time to go arrives, and it will arrive for all of us, they regret that they didn't fill their lives with maximum purpose. I have looked in the mirror every morning and asked myself, if today were the last day of my life, would I want to do what I'm about to do today? And whenever the answer has been no for too many days in a row, I know I need to change something. Steve Jobs. Now in 1999, Monster.com sponsored a Super Bowl advertisement, When I Grow Up. In the advertisement, little children tell each other their life goals. They said things like, when I grow up, I want to file all day long. The other one was like, I want to claw my way up to middle management and be replaced on a whim. Now the overall powerful message is that no, no one chooses mediocrity or ordinary jobs as a goal, but for many people that turns out to be their destination. Now the seven deadly sins of mediocrity are one, aimlessness, two, boredom, three, comfort, four, delusion, five, ego, six, fear, and seven, guardedness. The first one, aimlessness. This is when you go through life without a main theme designed just for your life. A good tip is to try to achieve a productive passion by getting a focus on others since it will be more inspiring than leading a life just for yourself. Focusing on others can make life more interesting and fun. Second one, boredom. This is a common trap for anyone. What happens is a person spends years researching something and gets a degree or certificate and eventually comes to a stagnant state where the things they do on a day-to-day -day basis offer them little to no creativity and no chance for them to challenge themselves. To counteract this sin is simply to resolve to more, be more curious about the things around you. The third one, comfort. Not everyone has to change, survival is not mandatory. Now, being comfortable may seem like the best way to live life, watching Netflix, eating fast food, constant partying, drinking alcohol, but the, the opportunity cost and perspective, when we indulge in those things, we are missing out on other things. To counteract comfort, commit yourself to future growth, be willing to go into dark rooms, develop a say yes attitude about everything, and don't withdraw at moments of discomfort, and assume ownership of your life. The key here is to find balance in what you do and when you do it. The fourth one, delusion. People are amazing at fooling themselves regarding what they are capable of. Developing self-awareness to know who you are and what you can achieve will be beneficial. Set high goals for yourself, create a code of ethics for yourself and stick to it, and do these things to avoid delusion in who you are. Number five, ego. People who overcome their ego tend to embrace humility, accept that they do not know everything. They go learn more and become more adaptable, they correct their mistakes instead of glossing over them, they avoid a sense of entitlement because
because it can interfere with their ability to engage with the world. The captain of this ship's ego is what will kill him. His attitude is never accept defeat, even when defeat is obvious with a sinking ship. And if it's not the strongest of the species that survive, but the most adaptable, Charles Darwin. Number six, fear. Fear is simply energy and is the strongest of humans' emotions. You must counter fear and let it work for you rather than against you, and take chances and accept risks. Consider these two ways to transmit the energy from fear to go after something positive or to run from something negative. When you go after a promotion and you are in the driver's seat, and with other with the other, you use energy from fear to avoid getting fired, forcing you to be in a passenger seat. One is bad and one is good. Number seven, guardedness. Don't block out meaningful people in your life as you become busy in your pursuit for personal and career advancements. Become sensitive to your relationships, expand them and make them more meaningful. Most of the things you seek in life will come as a result of interacting with others formula for the good life. There are three types of work a person should constantly be, en be engaged in. One is mapping, which is planning things out. Making, which is taking action and doing work. And then there's meshing, which is to improve skills and be curious and focus on long range activities that pay off down the road. What type of worker are you? Are you a developer, a driver, a drifter, or a dreamer? They basically do the formulas for the good life in different sequences. Try to figure out which type are you. You may soon end up off track, so take about 15 minutes daily to remind yourself to focus on what you should be focusing on, so that you may not end up in a cycle of just going through the, emo the, the motions. The ethics, where you write your codes of ethics and apply it to everything you do each day. Mission. The long range goals depend on steady completion of daily tasks. People consider who you will meet today and how you will engage in a productive conversation. Tasks make sure what you do contributes to your long range goals, and you don't just work on others, develop yourself as well.